Okay, the purpose of this video is to describe one way of characterizing a system, which is the system response to a unit step function. This is not the only way you could characterize a system, and in fact, later on in another video, we'll talk about how to characterize a system in terms of its response to an impulse or a delta function. So, the idea, however, is that uh, the response of of the system to a unit step function is very instructive and gives you very useful information about what the system does and how it's going to respond to many real life situations. So the idea is we have a system and we have an input to the system which we're going to have be the unit step function. Here's our system and here's our output. Okay. So, let's graph what happens here. Okay, so we have our unit step function, and at time 0, it jumps up to a value of 1, and then it just stays 1 for the rest of the time. And what quite often will happen to uh, a system is uh, the output will follow the input in some sense. In particular, if the idea is the input is your desired value and you have some sort of feedback mechanism to make the output go to your desired value, then this happens. Um, in fact, this is the context in which most of this stuff is most useful. So, let's just assume that we have some output that uh, does something like this. And this is actually typical of what you might see in a second-order system. Um, <coughs> so, this would be the output in response to the input, of which is a unit step function. And let's see if we can characterize the different uh, components of this that are interesting. And to do that, first I'm going to get rid of that ugly bit there, because it was ugly. One thing that you're interested in is the difference between the value that you get out and the value that you want. So again, if, the, if you want the output of the system to approach the input, then you'd be looking at the difference between a value of 1 here and the value of y of t. And quite often, as time goes on, you uh, get uh, what we call a steady state response. That is, um, things stop changing, the wiggling bits go away, and so you just have a y of t that stays constant because the input stays constant. The difference between the desired value, which is this unit step function, and the actual value is what's called the steady state error. Okay, so um, again, this is just the error that happens after all the wiggly bits have uh, gone away, and uh, this is the thing that um, goes from, uh, or basically, one way to characterize a system. Another way to characterize a system is to look at the amount of time it takes to go from 10% uh, of the final value up to 90% of the final value. So for this signal, that's 90%. 10% is here. And so you look at the time that it takes to go from here to here. So this time here is called the rise time. because this is the time it takes for the signal to rise from 10% to 90%. Um, sometimes you will see a situation where you're worried also about how long it takes the signal to go from 90% down to 10 cent, 10%. So for example, if you have um, a point at which the input goes from, say, a 1 to a 0, a value of 1 to a value of 0, you want to find out how long it takes the output to fall. 
so that would be a fall time and it looks you know the concept is very similar to rise time um, another thing that we quite often are interested in is the distance that the signal goes over the desired value before it settles down into steady state so if you look at the peak value of the signal up here and compare it to the value that you wanted it to have this is oftentimes called the overshoot because the idea is that the signal as it's risen has overshot the desired value overshoot is usually described in terms of a percent so you take the the value of the overshoot this distance and the ratio of um, the overshoot to the desired value which would be this distance so it's the ratio of this guy here to this guy here and express that as a percentage and that gives you the percent overshoot generally uh, the smaller the overshoot the better but the smaller the overshoot the longer the rise time so there's usually a design trade-off here to get really fast rise times you have to live with higher overshoots and vice versa okay one last time that we'll look at is what we call a settling time and let's see so a settling time is the time from when the uh, uh, when the unit step function occurs so in this example it would be zero out to the point in time where the distance between the signal and the steady state error or I'm sorry the the signal and the desired signal has fallen to some reason or to some reasonable value so you might get a settling time as the time it takes for the signal to get within 2% of its final value or uh, to get within 5% um, of its final value so this time is called the settling time and it's the time required again for the signal to get close to its steady state value again all of these are of importance in real-world applications um, so you might want to know how quickly a motor will respond to a change in input or you might want to know how quickly you can change voltage levels on a circuit there's all sorts of different things that um, you might worry about and typically you need to worry about overshoot because um, overshoot can oftentimes lead to damage of components if it's big enough you're worried about settling time because you typically don't want things to wiggle around for a while um, so all of these things are used to measure your system to characterize it and quite often a design problem you face is to get all of them to be within accept acceptable limits because typically decreasing overshoot increases settling time decreases rise time increasing rise time increases overshoot and increases settling time so you have all these trade-offs that you have to worry about so this concludes the video on the different things we use to characterize a system response